Hello everyone and welcome to another Basics with Ben tutorial. I am really excited about this video and apparently so is Ralphie because I get to talk about a new Lens Studio feature that's going to open up a whole new world of possibilities. Now I'm talking about the Material Editor which is going to allow us to create custom shaders. Now shaders are going to give us a lot of control over how we render every single pixel and vertex in our materials. This means that we get to create a lot of amazing special effects without having to do any coding. No coding at all, Ralph! <laughs> now this tutorial is going to go over this little simple disintegration effect, which can be applied to any 3D object. This effect is created by adding some noise textures and mixing them together with a base and edge color, then feeding that into the color of the shader. Let's start by creating a new empty graph in the resources panel. To see the Material Editor panel, you can go to Window, Panels, Material Editor. Now you'll see just the shader output in the empty graph. Shaders are built by adding different nodes to the shader output to customize the color as well as modify mesh vertices. A shader is built from left to right, so we'll start on the left side and create a new node. To do this, you can either click the Add Node button on the top left of the panel or hit Tab. We'll start by adding some noise. This disintegrate shader is using something called triplanar noise, which essentially means we are creating three different noise textures mapped along the X, Y, and Z axes, and then blending them together to get rid of stretched textures or hard seams. So let's add a PBR node and connect it to the triplanar noise. Physically based rendering, or PBR for short, is an approach to render graphics in a way that accurately mimics the way light flows and interacts with objects in the real world. So let's connect the PBR output to the shader and see how it looks. Right now the noise is pretty dense in our material, so let's create a float parameter which will expose the values in the inspector for us to easily modify. We'll call it noise scale and connect it to the triplanar noise scale input. This will allow us to easily change the density or frequency of the noise. We want to be able to specify the density on the X, Y, and Z axes, so I'll change the channel to X, Y, Z. From here we can play around with how we want the noise scale to look for our effect. I think 0.3 is a good value, so we'll stick with that for now. Now we have a good amount of noise, but the sphere isn't disintegrating in the noise areas. So we want to use the noise to tell the shader which parts to disintegrate. We can accomplish this by using the discard node. Now the discard node tells the material which pixels to remove using a binary input. So a value of 1 means the pixel will be drawn, and 0 means the pixel will be discarded. Since we're using the noise to drive the discard node, we'll want to round the noise RGBA values to 0 or 1 to match the discard input. We can do this using the round node. Next, we want our discard node to be animated so the disintegration changes. We want our object to go from totally solid to this cool noise pattern to completely disintegrated or invisible. We saw earlier when we added the noise that the black and the white colors aren't solid and that they vary a lot in color. So all we have to do is change the values so that they're all 1 or all 0. We'll do that by adding and subtracting the noise to push it into this range. Let's create an add node and insert it between the triplanar noise and the PBR node. To do this, we can hold shift and drag the node into the wire connection, and it'll automatically connect. Now let's create a fluctuate node and connect that to the B value. We'll change the start value to negative 1 and the transition time to 5. You'll see how this changes the noise texture over time. Now we want to make sure that there are no negative numbers passed into the RGBA values of the PBR, so we'll create a clamp node and insert it in front of the PBR node. We can also update the discard values by connecting the clamp output to the round input. Now we can see that the material accurately disintegrates over time. Our next step will be to restrict the range of the noise so that we can grab the edge color. We can do this by using the remap node, which will allow us to change the range of the input to whatever we like, and also help better detect the edges. The range min in will be 0.1, and the max will be 0.5, and the range out will stay the same. 
When we connect the remap output to the PBR color, you can see how it's grabbing the edges. Let's create two color parameters so that we can easily modify the shader's base and edge colors, and we can rename them respectively. Then we'll create a mix node and connect the colors to the A and the B values, and connect the remap output to the ratio. Once we connect this to the PBR node, you'll see how the color changes. We can adjust it easily in the inspector by changing the base color and the edge color, as well as adjusting the noise frequency. The great thing about this shader is that it has a lot of stuff in it that can be applied to other shaders. Feel free to copy the shader graph into your own project. It'll be a great opportunity for you to play around with the different nodes to see what kind of effects you can create. This is why shaders are so powerful. They allow you to create these really advanced effects without having to do any coding. Thanks for watching everyone! If you enjoyed that video or even learned something new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to learn more about Lens Studio, go check out their channel for even more tutorials!